Hello, welcome to Rise Form Studio, episode number 61. I'm your host, Michael McAuliffe. This week, John Cavanaugh ties the HTA. Materials list. For your thread, clear fine mono. For your hook, it's an Eagle Claw 254 SS size 10, where you can substitute a TMC 800 or 811, and that's a number two in the TMCO. For your body, polar fiber and off-white, gray, and camel. For your eyes, small 3D prismatic, and for your head, you're going to coat it at the end with some clear cure goo, and you want to use the thick for this one. How's everybody doing? I'm here today at the Ramsey Outdoor Store in Succasana, New Jersey. I'm joined by a good friend of mine, John Cavanaugh. Great, great fly tire. Does Catskill style stuff and uh, real good saltwater patterns. Uh, what are you going to tie for us today, John? This is called an HTA. It just simply stands for high tie uh, anchovy. And this is a pattern of your development. Yes, this is one I came up with, but uh, the style, the high tie style, obviously has been yeah. around for a long time. But this is this particular setup I put together for uh, for uh, imitating anchovies, uh, specifically for fishing albacore. But you can also use it for bluefish and bass as well when they're on anchovies. Uh, I also do another one that I call the HTS, which is a silver side pattern. Right. Uh, but it's tied the same way, only the materials are slightly different, uh, which is also an excellent fly. And this fly has worked for us from uh, Watch Hill all the way down yeah, well, to the Outer Banks. Yes, it has. Yes. This has caught a lot of albacore. It's this is albacore, right? our, our go-to fly. I, I think I caught my first three albacore on this yeah. fly. So, uh, I'm going to use a fine mono thread. This is the hook I'm tying this on is a, a 254 uh, Eagle Claw. Uh, this is actually a it's, a it's a cheap hook, but it's man, it's strong. I, I've never had a problem. Uh, breaking or bending one of these uh, hooks on a fish. Uh, the thing I like about it is that it's actually such a heavy hook, it's really actually a bait uh, hook. It's not really a, a hook designed for fly tying. But the fact that it's a heavy hook helps with the keeling effect of, of the fly. It helps keep the fly from tipping it, over on it. Tracks it tracks properly. It tracks properly. It's probably the, the biggest advantage to it. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start the thread just uh, to the right, to the eye side of the center of the hook. Get a little, uh, a little base going. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to use some off-white polar fiber. I'm going to go ahead and take out a good sized piece. And what the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to form a belly for the fly. Now, if you've never worked with polar fiber, it has a, the consistency of it is it, it has long fibers, it has mid-sized fibers, it has a lot of short fibers. And so I've cut a, a patch, a piece off from the patch at the base, and now I'm going to go ahead and I want to shorten out some of these long fibers because. I want to build a taper into the body and I don't need the really long fibers at the back. Now I'm also going to remove a lot of this thicker fiber down at the uh, patch end. So I'll clean some of this out of here too because I don't want it to be that but I don't want to have too much bulk. Okay. And I'll go ahead and I'll just pinch this together a little bit and check to make sure I've got the length I want. You can, as you can see I have kind of like a 360 degree taper with this material and really uh, it's effective stuff. I'll go ahead and I'll cut the stubble end here nice and straight so I get a good tie end for it. And you go ahead and you lay this right here on top. You can use a pinch if you'd like to pull it in place. One or three or four turns to hold it in place. What I like to do is rock the material back and forth a little bit on the top of the hook, and that kind of helps to flare the material over the top of the hook instead of having it stacked directly to, uh, over one another. Okay, so that'll be our belly section there, and then we'll go right back to this off-white colored polar fiber again. Now we're going to get a, another piece. I'm going to try and get a little bit more material this time because I want to keep some of the longer fibers and there aren't as many of them when you grab it comes. So we're going to go to a little bigger piece this time. Try and get some more of the longer fibers in this one. Now I'm going to go ahead and start by pulling out all the real short fibers this time. I won't even pull any off the end yet. I want to thin out this thick side first. And I'll go ahead and take a look at it. Pull this out here. Now this really, really long stuff I'm going to yank that out too because that's actually Take a look at that, and then we can go ahead and lay it on here. And you can see by adding that second section on, you've created a, a longer taper here in the back. So you've got a taper to the fly without having to even trim it. Uh, basically, with polar fiber uh, material, you really don't want to trim it with scissors. If you if you need to adjust the the, the uh, length of it, 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 it works better if you just pluck it out yeah. by hand than if you try to. Uh, cut it. Uh, it just looks more natural. Yeah, well, you can't, you can't cut ends on the, the butt ends of it. You can't cut the long end of a tapered material. Right. So the same thing here. I'll just kind of rock that back and forth a little bit. Kind of get it to set and lay down in there. And one thing that's important with this fly is a comb. I found some of these cheap combs at a garage sale that I've been using. So, and 
give us a little bit of a brushing out here that blend into itself. Yeah, it really tapers beautifully. And you get a, just a nice taper, and you also get the, the proper silhouette uh, to the fly. I'm going to use some uh, polar flash here uh, in silver for a, a little bit of flash. You don't need a lot. I use about eight strands or so. It's fine. This over. Set this in right at the front. The reason why I like doing it this way is because it, it, it naturally sets the material on either side of the hook. As I draw back on it with the uh, with the thread, it, it automatically sets the, the uh, flash to the sides so you don't wind up with all the flash on the top of the fly. If you like, you can stagger cut the flash too. I don't on this flat pattern, but you can. Uh, a lot of people like to do that. Now, the next thing we'll, next, uh, we'll use here is some of the uh, gray polar fiber. I'll pull out a decent patch of that. Trim that off. And we're going to do essentially the same thing. I'm going to try and clear out some of the, the, the short fluff at the patch end. And I'm going to take, just pull out the really long fibers from the other side. And then I want to check and see how it, how it blends in with the taper that I've already established. Beautiful. It looks good there. I'm just going to tie this in right in front of where we tied in the uh, flash. And you're going a little bit shorter on this one. Going a little bit shorter, yeah. We're, we're coming back getting shorter now on the fly, the, the maximum uh, length of the fly. We're coming back going in the other direction now. And for your weight, you'd say that was two times the shank length? I would say, yeah, the maximum distance is about uh, another whole shank length right. behind it. And, and keep in mind, this fly can be, uh, can, the distance that you tie, or the length of the fly that you tie is up to you. Uh, as, as people who fished with, uh, anchovy patterns know, uh, there's a size variation in anchovies, and then early in the season they tend to be a lot smaller. Uh, the, the bait fish may only be an inch or an inch and a half long total. All right, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go on top here with some of the uh, camel colored uh, polar fiber. And I just want to blend this in here and, and continue on with the taper here, so I'm actually going to shorten this up a little bit from where I had it. But, but overall, you're generally we're generally fishing these between an inch and a half and four inches. Yeah, between an inch and a half to two and a half, three inches. Uh, I would say is probably close to the max that I like to fish an anchovy pattern. The only time we've seen the, the yeah. big anchovies is down in, in harbors. harbors. Those were huge. Those were huge. <laughs> they were bigger than most of the uh, silver sides that you see up here. The big spearing. I was, I, was, I was shocked. I've never seen anchovies that big. And that's essentially it. You've got the fly tied at this point. Uh, you just throw yourself a whip finish in here. When you're in production mode, you can crank one of these out in about two minutes. Yes, you can. You, they actually go pretty quickly. Uh, once you've gotten used to the steps it takes to tie this fly, they go really fast. Right up my alley. Uh, the, the only thing that takes time with this fly is, is putting on the clear, uh, clear cube. Uh, God, I can never say that. <laughs> clear cure goo. goo. God, I always Thank you, Brian, for hooking us up with the clear cure yes. goo, by the way. I, I always get that, that name screwed up, unfortunately, but it is great material, great product. Next, we're going to use a, a set of uh, 3D eyes on the side. I like to hold the material back while I place the eye so I can get it exactly where I want it. Yep. And the eyes on these are pretty damn close to the eye of the hook. They're right up front. Yeah, they are. And uh, they're prominent. They're, they're prominent on the bait fish as well. Uh, if you see a, a good size uh, anchovy up close, you'll see the eyes are very prominent yeah. on the bait fish. And so they should be on your pattern as well. I like the 3D molded eyes. I, think, I like the 3D look to it. I, th I think it really helps. All right, and uh, now we're ready for the, uh, for the goo. So I, I like to put it on a pad. Some people like to actually uh, dab the material on and, and work with it on the fly. I, I like to actually put the material on a pad. And then I can use it a little bit more like a epoxy. I can actually, I just find it's easier for me to work with this way. Yeah. I know everybody has their own way of doing things, and this is my way. No, they will do it your way, or they're not allowed to tie the fly. <laughs> so you just want to make sure you get a good bead of this going. I like to tap this into the material as well. Uh, try not to get it just on the surface. You want it to actually get embedded into the fibers as well. Yeah, get it good and saturated. Get it good and saturated up in the front here, because it'll go, once you hit it with the light and it dries, it'll go translucent. Back here, the back of where the material side in is where you want to have the the, uh, the goo come all the way back to there. This helps with uh, uh, not having a problem with the fly fouling. Right. And the materials wrapping around the hook. 
you don't want that. There's nothing more aggravating than a fly that fouls. And you're, that really won't play with albacore because their eyesight's so good. Yeah, their eyesight's exceptional. Them and the Benito, Atlantic Benito. The, yeah. You know, if you get bass or blues and they're hacking away at stuff, you know, matter. they won't notice it. But but uh, in, invariably, when you've hit, when you've got the Benito and the uh, and the albacore on the prowl, they they do notice that stuff. I'm just going to take a little excess ahead of the bottom out of there, and you can give it a zap. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, it's a really versatile fly, and it, it catches a lot of fish. And it's easy to tie. And it's easy to tie. It doesn't, you know, the materials aren't expensive. It doesn't take a long time to tie. The real trick is just you have to fish for false albacore with John all the time. And just, <laughs> well, this is what I do. I say, John, we're going fishing for sure. false albacore. Make sure you tie a bunch of HTA. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> then you don't have to tie them at all. Yeah, <laughs> now, you know, I've tied so many of these now. I've got, I've got enough. I've got everything we need for this coming fall already done. So. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, sir. Thanks for coming right. on the podcast, Thank everybody. You. Tie sure. this one up and fish it. It's a great pattern. First off, I'd like to thank John Cavanaugh, a.k.a. the ghost of Michael Landon, for coming on the podcast and sharing some of the false albacore love with us. Tie these up. Albies love them. I'd also like to thank Brian Carson from Clear Cure Goo for hooking us up. And, of course, I'd like to thank our official sponsor, Regal Engineering, manufacturer of the world's best fly tying vices and accessories. I'm Mike McCullough for RiseFormStudio.tv. Go get some.